So hey there, welcome back everyone to the NetEase Gold Series Hearthstone quarterfinals between Ruoji on your top and I live on the bottom. So let's see what both players have started for their first class. And oh, actually, Ruoji starting out with Rogue. I haven't seen that one an entire day, so let's see how that one's working out for him against I live's Druid. And I live not starting out with the very best of hands, though, but she has the shade of Nox Ramus that she can innervate if she would really want to. I love deciding to pass a turn, probably want to save that innervate for later. And Ruoji probably just going to equip his weapon at this point, nothing much else for him to do. I live, I, I'm expecting her, depending on her card draw, to just coin into the shade of Noxramus to get that starting up because Rogue has kind of a hard time getting rid of that shade of Noxramus because a lot of their spells are targeted spells. Of course, the shade, if, if it remains stealth, you can't target it. Uh, you can't use sap on it or anything like that. Big Game Hunter not able to be used on that because it can't be targeted. So that. Shade can just lie around as long as it's needed. So Irvin Ring Farseer now being dropped by Ruji as pretty much the only card he can play. SI7 Agent was another option, but of course the combo, the two damage is just too valuable. And I live going quite aggressive here with an early low effect play to drop that 5-5. And Ruji's uh, Deadly Poison and Sap now being blocked off uh, from any use. And I think that's a violent teacher that was drawn by Ruji, so he could play that one, but again, nothing to combo it off with. And I live definitely in a better position here so far, but that could change pretty soon, depending on what cards are being drawn. Of course, that Shave Nox Rams keeps on growing, and that is a Wrath being drawn by I live. Now, Keeper of the Grove can be used to silence that violent teacher, because I... I could imagine that she doesn't want Ruji to get more minions than needed. Of course, those uh, Violet Apprentices uh, ramping up really, really fast, especially in a Rogue deck where you can get all those combos uh, off pretty easily. Or Ilev could just attack with the low effect, leave uh, the low effect a little bit vulnerable to dying, but then again, you would at least get rid of the threat from the Violet Teacher. I love taking her time to think about what she's going to do. And as expected, Low Feb running into the Violet Teacher. Wrath being used as the last card to get rid of that Urden Ring Farseer. And the Shapeshift for the one damage. Now back to Roji. Probably not going to sap that uh, one. But what he can do with the 5 mana right now is Deadly Poison his weapon. And then drop the SI7 Agent. To kill that Loa Feb with the combo damage. So, Deadly Poison and the Sap, or excuse me, and the SI7 Agent, as mentioned, used to get rid of that Loa Feb. Free damage also landing. On to I live. Pilot the Shredder being drawn by her. So it's either the Keeper of the Grove or the Pilot the Shredder at this point. Probably the Pilot the Shredder would be the best play, but as I mentioned, Shade of Nox Ram is just growing and growing every single turn. And if it stays long enough, then Ryoji can't get rid of it, and I live will have a huge minion to attack with. So I'm expecting I live to sit on that shade of Nox Ramus till it's actually strong enough for lethal here. Roji taking four damage and a dire wolf alpha being dropped there. And Loafa being played in response as well. Plus the backstab to remove that one. So I live a little bit behind on the health department here. A little bit on the mana department as well, so I live a little bit 
in a, not the best situations right now because the only cards she can play is Keeper of the Grove and Tech Control. But decides to play the Keeper of the Grove for sakes its uh, science and finally reveals that Shades of Noxramas has only one health remaining. So I think that Whirlwind or a uh, fan of knives as I think it's called should be enough to get rid of that. Of course still free damage needed for that Keeper of the Grove. Azure Drake to draw a card. Draws into a second Azure Drake. Equips the weapon and pretty much has to attack into the Shade of Noxoramas. Small applause in the, in the crowd. I live with that Ancient of Lore. Can draw two cards. It's going to be Keeper of the Grove and another Ancient of Lore. So I live can keep on going with her card drawing here if she decides on that one next turn. Now back to Ruoji. Still sitting at 17, but. Really can't get his combo off in any way or form. Sap not being useful. Big Game Hunter not being useful. Azure Drake might be useful here. But I'm looking at the field here and looking at the cards in Eyeless hand. It seems like Eyeless regardless has the answer to everything here. So Ruji trying to trade as effectively as he can here. Force of Nature still in Eyeliff's hand. And there comes the Savage Roar. And she's smiling about that one as she has the Innervate available. And a lot of coins now being dropped in Eyeliff's hand because of that legendary card in, on Ruji's field. But Eyeliff doesn't even care. Attacks straight for Ruji and I live will win game one of this best of three. So, welcome back to game two between Ruji and I live. Ruji is starting off with that Flame Imp. And as seen before, Ruji has lost with his Rogue. And I live going for quite the aggressive play here. Innervate into uh, Keeper of the Grove. To get rid of uh, that Flame Imp. So let's see what Ruji is going to play in response. Going to go for that Spectral... Uh, or Hunter Creeper here, excuse me, Spectral Spider being the one that it spawns, of course. So now the question is, is I Love actually going to give him that? I would assume yes, because she does have uh, her hero power available to get rid of one of those Spectral Spiders. That Keeper of the Grove still sitting at three hit points. But Ruji does have an Abusive Sergeant in hand, so he can use that one to buff up his own spider and then attack into the Keeper of the Grove. And 
but first decides to tapsy when he gets harvest golem and as expected gonna use that abusive sergeant to get rid of that keeper of the grove and the sludge belcher now coming out for Isla, but not in the mana to play that one has to wait two more turns before she can actually do something and I'm not too sure what kind of variant Ruoji is playing of the Warlock build. Haven't seen any giants pass by just yet. So Undertaker and the Harvest Golem gonna be played. So that Undertaker is gonna be buffed up. There's the Shade of Noxoramus, so she can just buff or dump that one on the field. And unless Ruji has a Shadow Flame or anything like that. And he can't get rid of that shade of Noxramus for a little bit for a little bit longer, unless he decides to surprise every one of us and plays a twisting netter in his deck, which I am doubting. So piles of shredder being dropped, buffing that Undertaker yet again. And Ruji full on on the offensive here. Of course, can't do anything else but attack. So now, Ilev has a lot of options here. Druid of the Claw um, or Sludge Belcher. Either should be fine for her to bolster her defenses. I think that what Ilev wants to do is like keep her um, keep her Shade of Noxramus alive for long enough until she can draw a Savage Roar and just attack but Ruji does have um, does have a defender of Argus in his hand so he can put a went uh, put a wrench in the plans of uh, I live so let's see Loafeb not really the most useful cards right uh, useful of cards right now looking at the hand of uh, Ruji, who only has a power overwhelming, so it's 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 still between that Druid of the Claw or that Sludge Belcher is gonna go for Druid of the Claw play here and revealing that Shade of Noxramus. And Ruji now has enough resources to get rid of both the Shade of Noxramus and the Druid of the Claw and. Can also drop a sea giant on top of that one, and he will get a minion back from that pipe to shredder, of course, as this is one of the rare occasions where it actually wasn't silenced, as opposed to the rest of the tournament. So it seems like Ruji is going to go for power overwhelming play here. Gets rid of his uh, damage golem and wants to keep his uh, Pilot the Shredder alive, I feel. Or he could just attack with the Undertaker, but is going for the Defender of Argus here. And that means that his Undertaker would be more than healthy here. And I live now has a force of nature in hand, but applause... For her, as she, for her top deck, that is. So is she is gonna go for first in nature play? So what is he get? Millhouse Mana Storm being dropped by the pilots of Shredder. And you can see the smile on Ilev's face and the cheers of the crowd. But no spells in either player's hand, so Milhouse Man of the Storm is kind of just sitting there waiting for the first player to draw a spell. Doomguard come across and a lot being sacrificed here. But that is going to be 11 damage in total landing on Ilev. Can Ilev survive next turn? Dr. Boom being pulled by her, and I don't think that, 
I live has too much to stay alive that is sludge belcher and maybe a shapeshift to get some armor would been a good would be a good choice and it looks like she is going to go for that play and Ruoji is just sitting so comfortably right now all he has to do is attack if he pulls an iron beak owl then that would be even more amazing so what is the card in his hand it is a void walker is he going to tap to draw a card though yes he is implosion still in his hand knife juggler in combination with the implosion that's going to do a whole bunch for Ruoji And Ruji is considering his options because if he would use an implosion and he would get four damage out of that one, he would only get three imps. I live is also thinking about what is going to happen. Implosion lands two imps, Argain, and two daggers landing in the sludge belcher. Sludge belcher gets destroyed. One two slime remaining on the field. Millhouse mana storm taking that hit and. I live now with four health. Can't do anything here. And there are no cards in her hand that will prevent her from losing next turn. As she only has four health left, and even if she lose, even if she uses that ancient of lore to heal herself up. That will not be enough. I live conceding a Ruji tying up the series. Hey there, welcome back everyone to the Nettie's Gold Series Hearthstone Quarterfinals. This is game three between Ruji and I live. Warlock Mirror matchup here, so we're going to see how this one is going. Flame Imp for first play for I live. So Ruji seems like he is... Going to coin for that direwolf alpha, so that might force a play out from I love because it will force that flame imp to run into that direwolf alpha. Of course, I love could just ignore that and go for the damage onto Ruoji and let him do the damage instead. It's kind of a game of chicken here who will attack the other minion first. But with two mana, I love could, of course. Just tap as well. As uh, pretty much any and every card in your hand can be played except for that Defender of Argus at this point. But I'm not too sure what would be the best choice for her at this point. So it is going to be a Leper Gnome and I live going to go ahead and kill a direwolf alpha doesn't want to take any more damage from Ruji's uh, minions or doesn't want to see Ruji's minions getting buffed up next turn at the very least and now Ruji has a leper gnome on his hand and that's a guarantee for a certain amount of damage unless it gets silenced which Ruji doesn't have in his hand he can respond with his own flame imp but of course only thing that would happen is that that is going to be silent or that, that is going to be run into flame imp and the undertaker going to be played so i live at this point has to make a choice whether 
she wants to kill the Flame Imp or the Undertaker with the Leper Gnome. So Haunted Creeper being played by I Live. And now it's just a choice between the Undertaker or the Flame Imp. I'll probably go for the Flame Imp. N hoping that Ruji wouldn't have any death rattle minions because if you go for the flame imp and the undertaker doesn't get buffed next turn you can take it out with the spectral spider or with the haunted creeper rather it seems like I love is just do just that Ruji now sitting at 25 health draws into a sea giant so I'm not too sure about a knife juggle play. It does it does leave it open to being destroyed rather quickly? Direwolf Alpha uh, probably helping out in that one, as I can just play the Direwolf Alpha and just attack with uh, the Haunted Creeper into the knife juggler. Abusive Sergeant actually coming out as well, just to get some minions out on the field. As the attack buff is a little bit wasted there. Now Ruoji, who draw, has drawn into a Nerubian Egg, has the potential to buff up that Undertaker. Of course, Implosion also being a card that he can play in. Has a 75% chance to kill it. Does manage to kill it. Two Imps joining his side. Another Direwolf Alpha being drawn by Isla. But going to go for the Defender of Argus play. And that means that all the minions on Isle of side are strong enough to take out the ones on Ryuji's side without any repercussions. Or without dying, at the very least. Do take a little bit of damage. Defender of Argus also being available for Ryuji. But doesn't have the mana to play both the Defender of Argus and Rubian Egg. Which I would assume would be the optimal play for him. Now Ruji has to make choices here. I would assume that he's definitely going to tap though to draw a card. So taps, gets an urban egg and plays the one he had in his hand already. Soulfire! Oh! haven't seen that card in a long time especially now that it has been changed so soul fire used to be um used to have no mana cost now it does cost one mana a lot of players preferring the dark bomb now over the soul fire but it seems like uh, Ilef is going for a little bit of an old school style here still playing that soul fire of course it is a little bit more damage but I love considering her options here. At the very least, Ruji has that Nerubian Egg, and with that Direwolf Alpha, it's gonna get rid of that one as well and spawn that 4 4 Nerubian. Time is eventually running out. Taps and draws another Soul Fire and smile on her face. I'm not too sure if she's actually that happy about it. And I was just going to go full out on the aggressive here. 17 health remaining. And I'm actually wondering here. Hmm. So at this point, Ruji kind of has to play the Voidwalker or the Defender of Argus because I live essentially has 12 damage in hand. And 8 on the field, which would total 20. It would all depend which card she discards with the Soul Fire, of course. Second Nerubian Egg being played. And Defender of Argus now coming out as well. Nerubian Egg will fall and spawn that 4-4 Nerubian. And Ilif can take a risk here now. Because let's... Let's take a quick look at how much damage she has. She has 12 in hand. 
essentially, and that plus the two of the direwolf alpha on the field, that would be 14. So she doesn't have lethal at this point, but abusive sergeant might make a small difference in that one. I'm quickly doing the math here, because Soulfire would be a total of 8, and Power of Willing would also be 4, so that's 12. Direwolf Alpha would be 14, Abusive Sergeant would be 16. So, Ilove doesn't have Lethal this turn, in any way or shape. I think that the best way, like, if Ruji would be sitting at 16 health, she could have played double soul fire and hope that she would have discarded the undertaker but it seems like she is gonna go for the aggressive play here gonna buff up that direwolf alpha and power overwhelm it eight damage landing onto that one and keeps the double soul fires in hand knowing that she could do a whole bunch with those next turn but it all depends on the card she discards with the soul fire and if ruoji is able to hold his own with the board here has a void walker to set up his defenses here so pretty much forced to play that one is he gonna tap if he draws a second defender of argus then that will be extremely helpful for him acidic swamp ooze gonna be played as well no weapons for i left though and this seems like this is a do or die situation for both players. If Ilev doesn't manage to make game this turn, then Ruoji will sure as hell do it himself. And Ilev is looking at the board saying, How can I win this now? Ilev drawing into a sea giant. Can't play that one, but. I'm not too sure. So if Ilif has a Dark Bomb in her deck, she might want to tap for it. She might want to look for it. She might have to believe in the heart of the cards if she plays that Dark Bomb or any kind of card that will do one damage to Ruoji. Tapping her only option. Defender of Argus coming out, but that is not enough. That is not enough, and looking at the numbers on Ruji's field, it looks like he has enough to finish off Ilif, but Ilif might just play those soul fires just to destroy the minions on Ruji's side, but even if she destroyed that Nerubian, and best case acidic swamp ooze, then Ruji would still have 19 damage on the board. I'm kind of wondering if she's actually going to do it. First soul fire being expended. And she discards the second soul fire and concedes as soon as she sees that. Ruji winning the second game. So welcome back everyone to game four of the Nettie's Gold Series Hearthstone uh, quarterfinals. Excuse me. This is game four between Ruoji and I live. Uh, Ruoji winning two games in a row with his Warlock. So let's see if this is going to be his third win in a row and will be the win that is needed to bring himself towards the semifinals. And just to give you a quick update on the prizes here, the winner of this entire tournament will be taking home 170,000 Chinese won, which is $27,000 approximately. Of course, the, uh, if he makes it to the quarterfinals and loses there, he will be taking home 20,000 
uh, one, which is about $3,000. Same counts for Ilif if she makes it to the quarterfinals, but it all depends on this match who will win this one. So Ilif going for Paladin, her last class, so needs to win the next two games with uh, that one. Abusive Sergeant going to be dropped and another knife landing into Ilif, who is now sitting at 23 health right here. Coin is available, but is she going to coin for the pile of the Shredder? Yes, she is. Now back to Ryoji. Who draws into an implosion and is going to play it. How much imps will he get? Gets two from it. One dagger landing in the pile of the Shredder. One landing into I live and I love getting a one free minion from that one Ruji doing as much damage as he can but I live now has enough mana for to consecrate and that would clear out the entire field eagerly plays that one and now Ruji is behind on cards, has a Nerubian Egg in his hand though, and a Defender of Argus, but can't play both. And a second Nerubian Egg now in his hand. Uh, two Spectral Spiders being spawned because he still had that Haunted Creeper on the field after that Consecrated, or uh, while the Consecrated landed. So Ruji going to go ahead and play double Nerubian Egg here. Leaving I live at 17 health now quartermaster being drawn by her and wouldn't be too surprised to see her play that sludge belcher at this point and just as a quick update here I'm being told that Ruji is actually teamless right here so he has a single player uh, on his own made it through the qu qualifiers and made it to the stage. Meanwhile, I love as part of Team WTV. I'm not too sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly. My Chinese isn't the best, so I think that might be pronounced Daoju TV. And surely she wants to bring home the victory for her team, especially after Zion, her teammate, made it to the semi-finals as well, what a final that would be. So it's going to play the low of Feb instead of uh, the Sludge Belcher, not being too afraid of, of anything buffing those Nerubian eggs there. Now back to Ryuji who is drawn into a Void Walker and draws into his own low of Feb. Defender of Argus being played, buffing up those Nerubian eggs and now Ilev has a little bit of a problem here. As Consecration is not enough to get rid of the field. And if she takes out those Nerubian eggs, they will spawn 4-4 four, four Nerubians. But one of them gets denied by the Iron Beak Owl. Turning into a regular 0-2 uh, Nerubian egg with no effect. So what Ilif can do right now is she can attack with the Loafeb. Make sure that the Nerubian spawns. And then equip a uh, True Silver Champion and attack into... Um, Attack into Nerubian. She would suffer a little bit of damage from that one, but it would be better than, than nothing, I would presume. As she has to get rid of that board. Regardless, True Silver Champion is equipped. Will take 2 damage in total from that one, leaving her at 11. Next card being drawn by Ruoji. Take a quick look what it is. Hasn't loaded yet. Is an Undertaker. So 4 damage now on Ruji's board, 11 health remaining for Ilev, but Ilev does have the Consecrate for next turn to get rid of that one. Voidwalker and the Undertaker being played as well as the Loa Feb, so filling up the field quite nicely. And now Ilev only sitting at 8, eight, eight hit points, draws herself a Dr. Boom and counts how much damage she can take and how much damage she can deal as that consecration can't be played for this turn so pretty much her only option is the sludge belcher I feel 
so healing one HP off of that one. And low fab attacking into the other low fab, and the sludge belch are now coming across. And now Ruoji in a little bit of a sticky situation as he has to find a way to get over that low fab before I live draws any healing cards like uh, Blessing of Kings or anything like that. Flame Imp being drawn by him. It's not going to be too helpful. So what Aruji can do right now is he can taunt uh, he can taunt up his um, Spectral Spider and his Defender of Argus with the Defender of Argus in his hand and hope that he can draw Death Rattle Minions to get that Undertaker going for the next couple of turns. I'm not sure if that's actually what he's planning to do, but his number one priority is get that Sludge Belcher off the field so he can kick Ilyph's health to zero. So it's going to do just that little Sludge being the only card that remains. Flame Imp now joining on the field. But Ilyph doesn't seem to care too much as she still has that Consecration in her hand. And Ilyph has 8 mana. Has to play to Consecrate at this point. To sweep out the field and Ruji not looking too happy about that still remains with one lonely minion on the field and I can imagine I love now attacking with the slime to get rid of that and next turn is definitely gonna be a quartermaster play coming out from I live iron beak owl and a harvest golem being pulled by him and that's not gonna be too helpful and I live Drawing into an antique heal bot. But she trusts that Ruji doesn't have enough to kill him. And uses those silver hand recruits to attack into Ruji's minions. Can't attack with the third one, of course. And now a Doom Guard being pulled by Ruji and he's sitting at 11 health so silences the one and then the doom guard being busted on goes for the direct attack and he has to hope that I love doesn't have anything but she in fact does the second quarter master for the extra training and that is enough damage and I live forcing game five So welcome back to game five of the Netties Gold Series Hearthstone quarterfinals between Ryoji and I Live. Seems like both players don't have the best of hands here. But Ryoji is gonna start off with a knife juggler. And I live maybe responding with just exactly the same. But now Ryoji can play that muster for battle. And if those daggers land into that knife juggler, then he'll be in a great position here. First minion summoning one dagger into I live. Second dagger into the knife juggler. Third dagger landing into I live. But one dagger is enough as the lights justice will be enough to take care of that one. I love now being dropped to 25. And I love equipping that weapon despite not having any minions on the field. So Nose's situation is a little bit dire here. And Ruji just going to go on the aggressive here. Knows uh, he can do so, but he might fear a Consecrate for the next turn. And I live not drawing into that one. Draws into a shield and mini bot.
And I was thinking about what her next move is going to be. Essentially, she has five mana, but the question is, is she going to coin for the Sludge Belcher? Or is she going to do something else? Is going to coin for the Sludge Belcher. Takes a little bit of damage as well. Now back to Ruoji. Doesn't have enough mana to play that Black Knight, though. It's missing one mana. And let's see, has Harrison Jones in his hand, so he can play that to draw some extra cards there, destroying the weapon of I Live. Of course, it only has one durability, so... He would only draw one card from it, but it wouldn't leave him with quite, uh, quite a strong minion on the field as well. Harrison Jones is going to be played, spending all his mana. Which card is he going to draw? Draws an equality from that, so has the equality consecration combo down. Now back to I Live, who is sitting on five mana herself. She can respond with her own Harrison Jones to draw two cards. I would leave her with the hand advantage. But then next turn, Ruji is definitely going to come out with a Black Knight play. So I still feel that Harrison Jones would have, would probably be the best player for I Live at this point. Just to get those cards uh, drawing to make sure she has response for next turn. But it's going to go with a muster for battle instead. And the shielded mini bot. So a lot of minions on I Live's field. And again, Ruji just missing one mana for the optimal play of that turn. Wouldn't be too surprised if he just attacks uh, that Sludge Belcher with Harrison Jones, or at least the Slime at least behind after playing the Black Knight. And I feel that Ruji would be doing wise to just expend as much of the durability of his weapon as possible before I live plays that Harrison Jones. Actually, gonna save the Black Knight there and gonna play the Consecrate. I'm not too sure why he wouldn't attack that shield mini bot first to get rid of the Divine Shield, though. Because uh, this seems like a little bit of a more inefficient way to do it. Because I feel that if he just attacked that shield mini bot first with his Silver Hand Recruit and then Consecrated, he would have saved a durability on his weapon. But maybe he just wanted to expend that on purpose. Harrison Jones now falling, and only 9 health remaining on I Live. And I feel that if Ruoji just equips his True Silver Champion and attacks, that would be more than enough. Because that would be 5 damage this turn, including the Silver Hand Recruit. That would leave I Live at 4, and I Live would have to draw a card that heals her like a True Silver Champion to keep on living or a guardian of kings and it seems like Ruji is going to do just that and reinforces as well and I live now sitting at 4 HP which card is she going to draw muster for battle it is play to Harrison Jones maybe she draws something useful out of it and it is going to be an iron beak element but that's not going to be enough golf claps coming from the audience as I live doesn't look too happy about that. And all Ruji needs to do is play to Consecrate and equip his weapon there. And with the Cog Hammer, Ruji will defeat Iliv in this series. 
and we'll be moving on to